In this a Vigilant tutorial, we're going to talk about the LDAP collaboration. The first video part was how you do the configuration, how you configure a collaboration in LDAP. In this video, we're going to talk about how we synchronize. So we're going to show you how the synchronization happens between the Active Directory and ACM with a LDAP collaboration in license installed. So before we get there, let's take a look at some important notes. So ACM to Active Directory collaboration sings in one direction only, and that is from the Active Directory to ACM. So ACM does not have the ability to update the Active Directory uh, in, uh, through this application. There's other methods, so if you require that for any, by any chance, uh, please get in contact with our tech support and they'll advise you how that uh, can be accomplished. Uh, also, each collaboration can sync with one Active Directory. If you, for any reason, your, or your customer has a Active uh, Directory or multiple Active Directories and you need to synchronize, all you have to do is just create multiple collaborations. And uh, the trick here is that you need to have a unique identifier across um, any type of database that you're bringing in, Active Directory, SQL, whatever the database is, needs to have that common uh, unique identifier among all those sources so when information is synchronized, it synchronizes it properly and you don't duplicate records. Any identities created in ACM are not affected by a Active Directory collaboration. Also, any identities synced with Active Directory will update will be updated by Active Directory. So if you update that particular identity with ACM, that information will be overwritten as soon as the Active Directory synchronize in, in the very next time. So we gotta remember that. Uh, in the application, I'm gonna show you how you can identify if a record is being synchronized with the Active Directory or not. So there's a couple of ways you can go about that. Uh, before we go to the software, let's go ahead and take a look in some of the prerequisites. So you want to always verify if you have the correct license before you start this, because um, if you don't have the, in this particular case, the Active Directory collaboration license, you won't be able to proceed with the configuration or even, you know, or the synchronization. And it's always also a very good idea to take a look, make sure that you're running uh, the latest uh, version of ACM. Um, also, ACM collaboration with Active Directory is always configured and working properly. So you want to make sure that you have that before uh, you proceed uh, what we're about to do. So, so let's go ahead and take a look at the software. So once you log into ACM, one of the first steps that I always suggest customers to do is go ahead, go to uh, Setups and Settings and uh, go into Appliance. And on the About screen, make sure that you have the latest version. And also in this case, to run an LDAP collaboration, you need to have the LDAP uh, license installed. Okay, if you, if you don't have that, just contact our tech support or our salesperson, they'll be able to, to assist you in getting a new license. So let's go ahead and take a look in the collaboration license, just uh, uh, in the collaboration that we created. This was created in the first video, so if you haven't seen the previous video on AD collaboration uh, configuration, please go take a look at that first, but I'm just gonna go ahead and, and give you a quick recap and how this works. So here it is. Um, this is my server, my Active Directory server. This is the way you log into the server. I'm using the administrator account, which is just uh, on my test server. Obviously, if you're doing this in a customer, they're not going to give you this account. They'll, they'll give you an account that will have the ability to do that or make sure that you ask that, right? And then uh, I'm just going to uh, do a identity configuration, no um, synchronization, uh, no tokens, no images, no user-defined fields. I'm just gonna do a very straight, simple one so you can see how how the application behaves, okay? Um, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of things. So I wanna show you first one identity that we're going to use for this scenario. So here's the identity of Sandra Jones. Notice that this person uh, has information 
And here's how I know this is coming from Active Directory, is this external system ID number usually is a pretty long name because I'm using a Active Directory unique identifier called Object Goody, okay? So that's how I know that this record came from Active Directory. Another way that you could do that is create a type of uh, employee that would be maybe employee-ad or employee-m uh, or any variation that m meaning manually so you manually enter that in ACM. So you could later on um, filter information and show just show me users that's been created in it, that been synchronized with Active Directory or users that were manually added to ACM. Okay, so that's the information. Notice that I don't have email here, so I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna switch to the Active Directory. So I have Active Directory, my Active Directory server here waiting. Uh, here's Sandra Jones. I'm gonna go ahead and double click that and just add an email address for it. So let's go ahead and do uh, Sandra at, uh, let's do xyz.com for example, right? So whatever information that is, uh, I can add in here, um, if that synchronization is set in ACM, you'll be able to see that. So now I'm back to ACM. I'm gonna go ahead and go in here into the collaborations once again. And now that my collaboration is already established, I'm gonna go ahead and run it. You can always do a preview if you're doing this for the first time, strongly suggest you do a preview. This will show you how the configuration will run will, without actually running. So it's just, again, just a preview, okay? So let's go ahead and run that. Say okay. And because I have a very few number of items, it's very quick. So the, the information runs, this, this runs very quickly. So let's go back to that um, identity. So I'm gonna do a search and I'm gonna look for here Sandra Jones. And now notice that email address is already there, right? So this field was empty and this is the email address I added in the Active Directory. Any other information that I synchronize or that I have in my collaboration to synchronize with Active Directory will behave pretty much the same way, okay? Now for this next section, here's what I wanna do. I wanna go ahead and go here into the Active Directory and say, this user is now disabled. Okay, so we're going to disable a user, synchronize with, with uh, uh, ACM, so run that collaboration and see what happens on the ACM side. So let's go ahead and run the, uh, disable that account first. So now that account is gonna show a, a little arrow there on the corner that shows down, so in other words, it is disabled, okay? Go back to ACM and I'm gonna go and run that collaboration again, okay? Uh, before I do that, let me show you something here important. Notice that this account is active, okay, right there. If I go to tokens, this person has one token and the token is active also, okay? So let's go ahead and run the collaboration now. So go ahead and run it. And again, because my number of records is so small in this uh, testing side that it runs very quickly. So it is done already. So let's go ahead and take a look again in that identity. And here what's gonna see. So now that identity is inactive. So any badge, pin numbers or tokens that this person has would be disabled by now. And here it is, it is inactive, okay? So that how um, you can go in Active Directory, add, remove, edit someone, disable the account and ACM will behave the same way, okay? So now let's, let's do the opposite. So uh, now I'm gonna go back to Active Directory and say, I'm gonna reestablish this account. So I'm gonna enable the account again. So this was someone that um, left the, the company for 30 days and by company policy or went from vacation and by company policy, the account is disabled until the person comes back, whatever, whatever the application is, right? So let's go ahead and enable that because there's an important point here that I wanna show you. So now the account is enabled, right? So let's go back to ACM. We're going to run. Notice that this has not changed yet because I haven't run the collaboration. I don't have my collaboration running automatically. 
So I'm, I'm doing this manually. I could go here in the collaboration and set the schedule so this would run in any amount of seconds, minutes, hours, days. You, you can go and pick your, your choice, okay? So run it again. And you can obviously also run a manual if you want something to take effect immediately, like what we're doing here. Let's go back to that same user, uh, Sandra Jones. Notice now the account is active, but here's the important part. It re you really need to pay attention to this part. All right, so the account is active, but by design in ACM, the credential is inactive. So we do this in case someone goes in Active Directory and by mistake re-enables that account, you will be able to you will enable the account in ACM but not the credential. So this person, as it is right now, cannot access any doors because the credentials are disabled. So if you actually enabling someone back or, or you reactivating someone in Active Directory and, and that person is activated in ACM you have to manually come here to the token or however many tokens that person has, come here, open that, okay, the token status and change that to active and save it. The synchronization is not going to change that. Okay, that's a very important uh, aspect of this uh, uh, collaboration. And that's, that's, I think, is pretty much it. That explains how the co collaboration runs. As I said before, you could have multiple collaborations. All we had to do is just create more collaborations in here and they would run, uh, we suggest never run them at the same time uh, for obvious reasons. But you can have multiple collaborations running in here, picking information, not only just for LDAP, but LDAP, SQL, Oracle, CSV, format, whatever you need to bring, you can bring multiple sources in. And the key point that I, I started in the beginning of this, this uh, uh, presentation, you want to make sure that if you have multiple sources, that you have a unique identifier across all the sources so you don't duplicate data in a CM database. Okay, that's it.